In this video, we'll be taking a look at how to model, analyze, and design concrete wall panels using Vriso 3D. So the first thing we're going to do is jump over to our model settings. So in the solution tab, there's a wall panel section where we can change a few options regarding our concrete wall panels. Uh, the first is the mesh size. So the program is running a finite element analysis on the wall panel. It does submesh it based on this mesh size specified here. Additionally, we can check or uncheck if we'd like the program to use P-Delta for our uh, wall analysis. Next up, we can go over to the codes tab and just make sure we're using the right concrete code for our project. So I'm just going to go ahead and use ACI 318.14 in our case. I'll just press OK and save those settings. So now we can go ahead and actually just draw a wall panel. So to do that, we just come to our draw elements section, click draw wall panels. And you see here the properties uh, menu actually updates to resemble what we just clicked. So by default, you'll have a concrete wall selected. I'm going to go ahead and change the thickness to 10 inches. And I can change my material here, let's say to 4,000 normal weight concrete. You can also specify a seismic rule here. You have the option of special, intermediate, or ordinary. I'll just go ahead and design to a special. And if I scroll down here, you can see we have a few more uh, bits of information that are going to be displayed regarding our wall such things as the reinforcement, for example, the rewire placement, the vertical bar size, horizontal bar size, the spacing, and some more advanced properties like I cracked for the moment of inertia, for example. So if we want to actually modify these properties, what we can do now is come back up to where it says design rule and click our triple dot button here. And it's going to ask you if you'd like to edit or view the existing wall design rule or create a new one. So we're just going to go ahead and edit the existing one. And right away, you see you get a nice graphical interface of your wall in plan view here, showing you the inside face on one side and the exterior face on the other side. And then you can also take a look at the rebar placement. You can specify each face or centered. The outer face bars, if you have each face, you can say, you know, horizontal or the outer face or the vertical bars or the outer face. And you can change your covers here. So interior cover, edge cover, uh, exterior cover. And then your vertical reinforcement can be specified here as well as the horizontal reinforcement. And then the maxes and the minimums for each of those reinforcements. So the program is gonna work on a design basis. So you just give it a lower bound and an upper bound and it'll essentially find the optimum spacing for that rebar based on the loads applied. You can even specify the increment for which you would like it to recommend you the optimal spacing. So if you want to specify only a rebar spacing on three inch increment basis, what we can do here is just go ahead and type three inches. And then additionally, I have a few check boxes up here where you can say that I'd like to group design walls or uh, for transferring loads to full height regions. You can say for in-plane loads or specify for out-of-plane loads. So now once we're done setting up the rules on there, we can just go ahead and press OK. I'll go ahead back to our wall panels button and then we can actually just click two points to define our wall panel geometry. So now we can just go ahead and create some basic load cases. So basic load cases are what the program uses to reference in the load combinations, which we'll take a look at here in just a second. So I'm just going to use a dead load and an earthquake load. And I'm going to punch in negative Y here in the Y gravity column, which means I'm just telling the program basically to account for the self weight of the concrete wall when I do that. So now I can click out of here. And now let's actually just add some uh, loads to our wall based on those load cases we just created. So to do that, we come to the draw load section. I'm going to click line load. It's set to dead load for my basic load case. And if I bring this over, you can see the units here are kit per foot for the start and end magnitude. So I'm just going to put a negative, let's say 0.3 kit per foot tributary dead load to my wall. Then I'll just press click to apply. Click the top of the wall. And now we have our dead load applied. Now I'll just repeat this process for the earthquake load. And in this case, I'm going to apply it in the X direction based off of these global axes you see here. And I'm going to change this, let's say, to 0.4 kit per feet. And that's our diaphragm load to the top of our wall. Again, press click to apply. Click the top of our wall. And now we have that load displayed here. Now if I double click the wall, it opens what we call the wall panel editor. And this is where you can add openings to the wall, um, you can also define the boundary conditions for the wall and define the regions. So before we get into that, you have some options here for a wall grid. So turning this on and off, as you can see there, makes a difference. 
You can also change the grid spacing to say six inch increments by doing 0.5. And this is handy for when you draw an opening that needs to be defined based off of a six inch, six inch increment. So now I can define my opening. I can uh, either auto generate my regions or the program will actually auto generate them when solving the model. I have a few display options here as well. I can turn on and off my nodes. Uh, I can turn on and off the regions, the rendered view, I can toggle on and off the lentil, I can make disappear. Um, and then we can also add our boundary condition to the top to the bottom of our wall. So if I want a fixed condition for any out of plane uh, bending at the base of my wall, I would just call it fixed, click the bottom node. And now we've applied that boundary condition to the base of our wall. So now let's go ahead and create some load combinations. So the great thing about Risa 3D is it has a load combination generator, meaning you don't have to individually create each individual load combination. So we just click the load combination generator button. And since I'm going to be doing strength design, I'm going to go ahead and generate some gravity load combinations based on 2018 IVC strength. So all I do is press generate here and you see we've added four new load combinations to our list. And since we've added a, some seismic loading, I'm just going to go ahead and click 2D for seismic. And again, 2018 IBC strength is selected. So all I have to do is press generate. Go ahead and close this. And these are the load combinations that we're going to be checking our wall for. So now that we've loaded the model and we've created some load combinations, we can actually solve the model now. So all I need to do is go ahead and press solve. I'm going to go ahead and solve a batch with an envelope, meaning the program will store the results for each individual load combination as well as report to me a envelope of those solutions. So I just press solve here. Go ahead and close out of these. And then the first thing I like to do after solving a wall panel is come to the wall panel design spreadsheet. And this is really a quick way to look at all of the wall panels on your project. In this case, we only had one, but it comes in real handy when uh, there's, a, there's a multitude of wall panels and you need to quickly see uh, which wall panels need attention to meet the strength criteria. So we have a couple tabs here, concrete in plane and concrete out of plane. So the in plane is going to give us the in plane shear unity checks. So we can see we're well below 1.0. So we're satisfying that. And um, additionally, we can look at the concrete out of plane tab for any out of plane loading. So we see here, since we didn't apply any out of plane loads, we're correctly registering as zero for those checks. So I'll just click out of this spreadsheet. Risa also offers some graphical display options for the results on your wall panels. So what I'm gonna do is come to drawing tools and turn off my display grid, just to make it for a little bit cleaner of a display. And what I can do now is come to the wall stresses drop down menu. And let's say FXY are the stresses that I'd like to look at. So the other great thing is you can actually change this based on load combination and view the different stresses in the wall based on that. So these colors are actually associated with the legend shown here, which associates the color with a force uh, on the wall panel. Additionally, we can toggle these off and look at the wall panel labels. So we can toggle through these. This is the name of the wall panel, the material of the wall panel, the number of the wall panel, even the local axes. So if I go to isometric view, we can see the local axes of our wall panel now and the design rule, as well as the length of the wall. So I can go back to the flat view, and then we can take a look at the detail report for our wall panel now. So this gives us all of the detail about our concrete wall. So we can see here we have input data, we have material properties, the geometry of the wall, and then here we have all the limit states and the force information region by region for our wall panel. So if we go ahead and start to expand these, we can see here that this is the uh, unity check values for each individual region in our wall panel. I can also, this is for in-plane, I can also look at the out-of-plane results. We can look at our wall reinforcement, our vertical as well as our horizontal reinforcement. And we can, like I mentioned, jump into each individual region in terms of the force diagrams associated with them. So if we look at our graphic up above, this displays to us which region is which, one, R1, R2, R3, and R4. 
And again, we can look at even more detailed information about these individualized regions. So I can expand these limit state checks, look at the axial, for example, the shear, and the deflection, and so on. We even have a cross-sectional detailing window, which will show the rebar placement in the wall, the cover, and the rebar size. And there's also reports for the opening in the wall. So the lintel design, we have force diagrams regarding that, and for the out-of-plane design as well. This concludes our look at concrete wall panel design using Risa 3D. For more information, please visit risa.com.